Microsoft Business Central is one of the most common ERP systems among small and mid-market businesses. Well, what exactly is Microsoft Business Central and what are its strengths and weaknesses? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach the third stage of digital transformation success. And Microsoft Business Central is one of the most common ERP systems, especially amongst the small and mid-market that we often work with. And Business Central is a system that competes with NetSuite and other small and mid-market ERP systems. But the question is, is it the right fit for you? So what I want to do today is provide a quick overview of what Business Central is, but then I want to get into the strengths and weaknesses of the product. And just to clarify, we are not affiliated with Microsoft. Our company is not affiliated with any software vendor for that matter. So today's discussion is meant to be an independent tech agnostic objective view of the strengths and weaknesses of Microsoft Business Central so you can determine if it's the right fit for you. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Business Central and see how Business Central compares to other ERP systems in the marketplace, I also encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report. It's a report we publish each year that provides a number of independent reviews and rankings of different ERP systems in the marketplace, as well as other metrics, benchmarks, and best practices to help make your ERP project successful. You can download that report by scanning the QR code right here, or you can go to the links below. First, I wanted to provide a brief overview of Business Central and how Microsoft got to this point in its journey with its ERP solution. If we rewind back to the early 2000s, 2002 to be exact, Microsoft wasn't really a heavy player in the enterprise tech space. They were still focused on Windows and Microsoft Office and other individual applications, but they weren't yet forging heavily into the enterprise tech space or the ERP space. So they acquired a company called Navision back in 2002, which was a Danish company that had been very successful in Europe. They acquired this company and eventually rebranded it as Business Central. And then eventually, after it was branded as Business Central, it then became part of the Microsoft Dynamics ERP umbrella, and now that has evolved into Microsoft Dynamics D365. So Business Central is sort of the the small and mid-market solution within Dynamics 365 that tailors the offering to those organizations that might be looking at other small and mid-market systems like NetSuite, for example. Now, in addition to understanding the history of Business Central, it also helps to understand the other component of Dynamics 365. And that other solution is called Finance and Operations. So Finance and Operations is sort of the counterpart to Business Central that focuses more on upper mid-market and enterprise organizations that are larger, more complex, diverse organizations. So F&O is sort of the solution for an organization that might be hundreds of millions in revenue or even billions in revenue, whereas Business Central is more focused on organizations that are on the smaller side of that equation. So when we're doing these reviews of Microsoft products, it's really important to understand the whole Microsoft ecosystem, including those two products. But as we're going to talk about later in this video, we also need to understand the other Microsoft apps and how they tie in to Business Central and how they might augment the value that you get out of a system like a Microsoft Business Central. So let's start with some of the strengths of Microsoft Business Central. In other words, why do businesses like this product and what are the capabilities that organizations are looking for when they procure Business Central for their organizations? To start, Business Central is a complete ERP system. It provides end-to-end business processes across an entire enterprise from finance, inventory management, even warehouse management, as well as supply chain management and other functions that businesses need to automate and run their business in a single platform. The other beauty of Business Central is that it integrates to other Microsoft apps. So when you look at Power BI and Power Apps, for example, or SharePoint, Microsoft Office, there's a lot of seamless integrations between those other Microsoft products and Microsoft Business Central, which makes it very appealing for those organizations that are heavily invested in Microsoft and other parts of their businesses. And speaking of businesses that already use Microsoft, another value add of Business Central is that it has that Microsoft look and feel. From a user experience or a user interface perspective, it just looks and feels like Microsoft, for better or for worse, and businesses that are used to using Microsoft products generally adapt to the software a little bit easier than non-Microsoft products. It's also a very scalable product, so it is a product that can scale for growth. So if you're currently using, say, QuickBooks, or if you're using a homegrown system or a Band-Aid solution of multiple systems, 
Business Central can be a way for you to scale up and to really grow your business. And as I mentioned before, there are companies that are hundreds of millions in revenue that are still using Business Central. So clearly it allows businesses like that to scale up well beyond just five, 10, 20 million dollars in revenue, or even just five, 10 or 50 employees. Business Central is a product that you can grow with to a certain point, although if you reach a certain point, it may be that finance and operations is gonna be a better fit. Business Central also provides a number of global reporting capabilities. So it's very good at adhering to global compliance and also providing global reporting requirements. And it's also very strong for reporting and analytics in general, not just for global reporting, but just in general, it's fairly strong compared to other systems out there in providing some of the insights and analytics that organizations need to run their business. Now, some of these capabilities are provided out of the box within Business Central, but some of those capabilities might come from Power BI, for example. If you're using Business Central, it's relatively easy to use Power BI to provide more advanced business intelligence and reporting, which can be very appealing to a lot of organizations. And then finally, within the Business Central ecosystem, you have access to the Microsoft ecosystem of different third-party providers and different apps that can integrate with and extend beyond the core Business Central capabilities. So that's another key feature. And like a lot of software vendors, Microsoft is investing very heavily in AI and artificial intelligence to enhance the capabilities of Business Central from that perspective. So now that we've covered some of the strengths of Microsoft Business Central, let's talk about some of the weaknesses. And it's important to understand these weaknesses, even if you ultimately choose Business Central, if you've already chosen Business Central, it's important to recognize these risks so that you can figure out how you're going to mitigate them and what you're going to do to address those gaps. One of them I already mentioned, which is Business Central is very scalable, but only to a certain point. If you're a very large, diverse, multinational organization, it might be that finance and operations within the Microsoft E365 ecosystem or another non-Microsoft product is going to be a better fit that allows you to scale better. So this is where you might look to Oracle Fusion or even SAP S4 HANA, for example, in for Cloud Suite. Some of these larger, more robust systems might be a better fit if you're a larger organization. Another weakness of Microsoft Business Central is a relatively complex licensing structure. When you look at subscriptions, if you're doing cloud rollouts of the solution, it can be very complex compared to other systems. It's not a straightforward pricing model, which can be very confusing during the procurement process, but it also can lead to a bunch of gotchas and added cost as you continue to use the software and as you continue to grow your usage of the software over time. So you just need to be aware of that if you are going to go down the path of Business Central. Now, similar to how Business Central isn't fully scalable to the largest organizations out there, it can also be that it's difficult to customize the product when you compare it to finance and operations. When we look at D365 FNO, as it's called, it's a little bit easier and there's more tools provided to be able to customize that software, to tailor that software for your needs. So if Business Central isn't a great fit for what you have, it may be that you're not going to be able to customize as much as you'd like, and it may be that you have to go look at third-party apps to ensure that you get the capabilities you're looking for. And then finally, one last thing I'll add is when I compare Business Central to FNO, it's widely viewed that FNO has more robust ecosystems of third-party providers that provide industry-specific solutions. So within the world of Business Central, you don't have quite that robust, broad, diverse group of third-party providers that are taking the solution and tailoring it for certain industries in the same way you might see with D365 finance and operations or other non-Microsoft products as well. So these are some of the weaknesses to be aware of, but having said all that, this is a reason why Microsoft Business Central is such a powerful product and why it's so common in the industry. So I've shared a number of strengths and weaknesses for the products, and now the question is, is Business Central the right fit for your organization? And my answer would be, it depends. It depends on what your needs are, and it depends on how well aligned the capabilities of Business Central are with your core functions and your core needs. If you find that Business Central can handle 80% or more of your stated business requirements, then yes, Business Central might be a great fit, and especially if you're an organization that's lower than one or 200 million in revenue, then yes, Business Central could be a good fit. However, if you're a multi-site, multinational, global organization with very diverse products and services, and you have very diverse needs as an organization, and you've got thousands of employees, it may be that Business Central is too small for you. It may be that you'll outgrow it too quickly or that you've already outgrown it. So those are some of the things you've got to ask yourself, and my job here today is to provide you an independent and balanced view of the strengths and weaknesses of this product. 
Now, if you'd like to learn more about how Business Central compares to other ERP systems in the marketplace, be sure to download our 2025 Digital Transformation Report. You can find it right here in the QR code or the links below. That report will provide a number of independent reviews and rankings to compare Business Central to other products in the marketplace. It also provides a number of best practices, tips, and benchmarks to help ensure that you're successful in your digital transformation in the ERP project. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.